Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone, and God bless you for wherever you are joining us tonight. Uh, I want to congratulate you. I want to appreciate you in the name of Jesus. And I know tonight, as we're going to dig deep into the word of God and see what God is going to tell us about this topic, abundant favor. I know that at the end of today, at the end of this Bible study, your life will never remain the same. Amen. And you'll be impacted. Your life will be impacted. You'll be transformed through his word because it is his word. His word is life. So as you have come to join us tonight, I see greatness in your life. I see abundance in your life. The abundant favor we, we envelop you and your family and everything you lay your hands will go upward and forward in the name of Jesus. So on Amen. behalf of your pastors, James and the pastoral team and uh, all members of the, in his presence, Christ Tabernacle Church, I welcome you to tonight's Bible study. Please don't be distracted. Get your pen, pen and paper and your Bible and come on board. And I know your life will never remain the same. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Apostle Patrick. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Prophetess, for that prayer. Thank you, choir, for the wonderful uh, praise and worship. So tonight, we want to look into uh, the scriptures. We want to study and learn together on abundant favor of God. Um, we want to pray for um, our teacher this evening. That our spirit will indwell in him. Speak to him to bless every one of us tonight. Uh, so much that our life will be transformed by the power of the word that we will hear tonight. And the favor of God will rub upon us um, and it will remain permanent in our lives in Jesus' name. So please join me as I welcome Apostle Samuel Olariaju as, she take, as he takes us in the Bible study for tonight. You're welcome, sir, Apostle. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, please let us say what Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, it's another privilege, an opportunity to gather together at your feet and to share of your word. Our spirits join together in holiness, in righteousness, in purity, in singleness of heart. Lord, we ask that you give us insight into your word once again and let your word impact our lives like never, ever before. And we thank you, Father, because you hear us always. The entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding unto the simple. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Send forth your word, O God. Let it heal us and let it deliver us from our destructions as it is written. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, it's another privilege to share the word of God with us. And um, by the grace of God, as inspired by the Spirit of God, with the conviction of um, the Spirit of the house for the month, I'll be sharing with us about abundant favor. In general, the favor of God, but um, sub team, um, the abundance of God's favor. Um, by the grace of God, since we started off in the new month, um, some of us, our ministers, our teachers, have taught us already about certain things relative to um, the favor of God. And as such, I will not delve into some of those things again, but I'd like us to see some areas which I felt like the Spirit of God highlighted to me. Number one, I'm sure that um, very many of us, to a very large extent, 99.9%, we can define what favor is. We understand what favor is. When we see favor in the life of an individual, we can tell that the favor of God is apparent in that person's life. Um, um, individually, uh, the favor of God can be upon a person's life. We can see the favor of God on a family. We can see the favor of God on a church. 
we can even see the favor of God on a nation or the favor of God can be evidenced over a particular business, corporation, um, institution, organization, as it, the case might be. So favor can be experienced or enjoyed both as an individual or a family, a church, nation, business, as the case may be. We, we, there's innumerable examples of men in history, in contemporary times, as well as in the Bible, that as an individual, they encountered, enjoyed the favor of God. And there are some other families like that that we can tell everywhere around the world who have experienced abundant favor of God, as well as the abundant favor of men. Amongst many churches, there are so many churches around the world, but be it as it may, in quotes, some denominations or some sects have been abundantly favored to do so much for the Lord and with the Lord and in the Lord. Amongst many nations of the earth, there's no question about it that Israel is the favored of God. I usually will teach and say that in every sector of business, there's that uh, brand name that really um, comes to limelight. And whether we believe it or not, it's a, a function, a reflection, a manifestation of the favor of God. For example, um, there are so many brands into fizzy drinks, but if I were to ask today, uh, everywhere around the world, how many such of those brands are renowned around the world? I'm sure that we can call one or two, three out of millions of brands that exist. I'm of the opinion that it is not only uh, believers that experience the favor of God, or it is not only saints that experience the favor of God, and we're going to substantiate some of these things from the scriptures. But everyone, both sinners and saints alike, can experience and enjoy both the favor of God and the favor of men. Um, but um, just by way of uh, um, example, the scripture says that the, the reign of God falls both on the good and the evil, and the Son of God, the Son, shines both on the wicked and the good. And in my own view, that's a manifestation of God's favor upon humanity in generality. So I believe that, that uh, in line with our team for the month, there are levels and dimensions of favor. According to Luke chapter 2, verse um, uh, 52, the scripture says, even Jesus, our perfect example, our master, our mentor, the one that we mirror, he increased in the dimensions and levels of favor upon his life. So I, I want to talk about the fact that there is a general favor that God has shared upon all humanity. And there's another dimension of favor that is exclusive to Christians. I want to now say that even amongst Christians, there's still levels of favor. If there are no levels of favor, we cannot be talking, or dimension of favor, we cannot be talking about abundant favor. If there's abundant favor, that means to say there is in abundant favor or there is limited favor. But we are praying tonight that the almighty God will bring each and every one of us as individuals, as a family, as a church, or businesses represented today yeah, um, into the level or the dimension of God's abundant favor in Jesus' name. Um, secondly, we have talked about um, how favor comes. It was a question in one of our meetings, how do we obtain favor? So we're not gonna be talking about that. Um, number three, we talked about where favor comes from. Definitely, we all agreed, we are on the same page that the almighty God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, the God of Israel, the God of the Bible is the origin and the author of favor, is the origin and the author of abundant favor. The Bible says that there's nothing that we have received that we have not received of him. The Bible says no man can receive anything except it be given from heaven. Scriptures also says is the giver of every good and perfect gift. So uh, favor is not self, um, 
uh, originated. He originates from the God who sits in heaven above, who rules and reigns in the affairs of all men. David speaking said, I will lift up my heads onto the hills from whence my help or my favor comes from. My help and my favor comes from the Lord, the owner of heaven and the earth, the landlord of heaven and the earth, the possessor of heaven and the earth, according to um, the words of um, Abraham, praise the Lord. Also, um, we have talked about um, the prophetic timings of favor in Psalm 102 verse 13, and we've prayed about it, where the Bible tells us that God will arise and have mercy upon Zion because it's set time to favor her has come. So there are prophetic timings when God initiates new orders or levels or dimensions of favor in a person's life. Having said and given this uh, background, um, I'll be talking about um, one, two, three, four sub teams as God gives us. But in Genesis chapter 18, verse 3, Genesis chapter 18, verse 3, um, there's something called the Lord of Force mentioned, according to Bible scholars, is the place where the word favor was used first and foremost in the scriptures. And it was used by the father of faith, Abraham. And Abraham said in Genesis chapter 18, verse 3, uh, my Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Mm -hmm. This was talking about the divine visitation on Abraham, where the angels were passing by, and he requested that if truly, really, he had found favor in the sight of the angels, then um, they should not pass him by. But further to that, several instances of the Bible where the Bible talked about favor. The Bible says that in Genesis 29, 17, that Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Somebody was tender-eyed while the other person was beautiful and well favored. In Genesis chapter 30, verse 27, Laban, as crooked as he was, he was able to design or to define the presence of favor in the life of Jacob. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in your eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. So Laban significantly knew that there was something supernatural, something spectacular at work in the life of Jacob, that since Jacob had, uh, um, he, he had been hosting Jacob, every good and perfect thing turned in his favor. So he was asking more of that favor by asking Jacob um, to tarry with him. Um, my standard text today is from Genesis um, chapter 41, verse 1 to 4, and I'm going to read that. Genesis chapter 41, verse 1 to 4. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, I came up out of the river seven well-favored kind and fat-fleshed, and they fed in the middle. And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kind did eat of the seven well-favored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke. In this passage of the scripture, we see also a comparison between well-favored and ill-favored people. My prayer from tonight until eternity is that whether as an individual or as a family or church or ministry, a nation or business, as many of us who are represented in this Bible study today, as well as those who are affiliated and associated with us, that we shall never ever be ill-favored but we shall be well favored in every good and perfect thing, every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year of our lives, in all that pertains unto us, that whatever pertains to ill favor shall be taken out of us in the name of Jesus. Whatever makes us disfavored, whatever 
it might be a spell, a jinx, a mark, a sign, whatever it is that is responsible for this favor in our lives shall be taken away. But one revelational uh, um, truth I wanted to bring out of this passage is the fact that even amongst animals, some animals by prophetic vision were said to be well favored while others were heal favored. How much more mortal men, how much more men who are much more glorified in God's creation made in his image and likeness. If two group of animals could be defined or designated as ill favored or well favored, then we know that the concepts, the spiritual concept, spiritual principle or ideology as a case might be, that we call it, is or, or favor is a strong spiritual reality. And the concept yeah. or the idea yeah. of faith must never ever be despised nor disdained. And I'm praying that God's favor, not just God's favor, but in his abundant dimension and level will yeah. come each and every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We talked about the relationship between favor and faith. I remember vividly that um, it was um, Apostle that mentioned about the place of favor in faith. And it is no um, coincidence that the first person who talked about favor in the scripture is the father of faith. So he goes forward to tell us that if we must see God's abundant favor at work for us, at work with us, at work upon us, and in all areas of our lives, our faith must be activated. We must be men and women of faith, just like our father, the father of faith, Abraham, and as such, we'll be able to experience and enjoy the favor of God. Amen. Now, going to the full um, um, teaching for the day, I'll be talking first and foremost about why God favors us. Why is it that God favors us as individuals? Why does God grant or give his favor to an individual, to a family, to a church, to a nation, to a business? Because it is obviously written in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, to everything there is a purpose. Why am I asking God for favor? Why do you want God to favor you? The Bible says sometimes we pray and we do not receive because we pray amiss. And, or put it in that way, we ask for favor or we may ask for favor. We may not experience it. We might not enjoy it in its abundant uh, dimension if our rationales, our intentions, our reasons for asking for it is not good and right in the sight of God. So that it will not be said, as it is written in the scriptures, they did that which was good and right in the sight of God, but not with a perfect heart. I believe that if and when our reason for asking God for his abundant favor is acceptable unto God, if our rationale is right, then most likely we will see ourselves um, wallowing, swimming in the abundant favor of God. Amongst many other things, that could be uh, or that sh could be or should be a purpose for desiring the favor of God. Number one, God gives us his favor so that he can fulfill his covenant, his promise, and his word. Number one reason, amongst many other reasons, why God gives us his favor is so that we can fulfill or he can fulfill his covenant his promise and his word. He's a covenant keeping God and as such, he wants to keep to his word. So he endows or endures his people with his favor because he had already made a covenant, a promise, and he has given his word that it will single out between them that serve him and them that serve him not. So favor is one of the uh, um, covenants and promises of God. Number two, reason why God gives his people, his beloved, his abundant favor is for him to be glorified. 
when the favor of God is upon our lives, God is thereby glorified both amongst the saints as well amongst the sinners. When people who are outside there, who are unbelievers, when they see you as a child of God and they see the favor of God evidently on you, just like it was on the well-favored cattle, just like um, Laban saw it in Jacob's life, then God is glorified. And by we carrying the glory of God, we also can glorify God. We can say, see what the Lord has done. Mm. But three, the reason why God puts his favor upon us is for us to be blessed. The favor of God is a blessing. Without the yeah. favor of God, you yeah. cannot be blessed. The favor of God is what provokes or produces the blessings of God in our lives. Everyone is as blessed as much or in a direct proportionate uh, uh, manner as much as the favor of God upon their lives. The physical, yeah. spiritual, financial blessings upon our life to a very large extent is a reflection, an indication, a manifestation of God's favor. Without the favor mm -hmm. of God, we cannot see, we will not see, we will not know, we will not experience, we will not enjoy, we will not encounter the blessings of God. So God puts his favor upon us so that blessings will follow naturally. When the favor of God is upon an individual, a family, a church, a ministry, blessings will naturally, normally be the order of the day in such a person's life. Praise the Lord. Mm. Um, Hallelujah. Why is it that God favors us? God favors us so that we can be a blessing to his kingdom, so that we can yeah. be a blessing to the saints, so that we can be a blessing to the world at large. If yeah. you are not blessed, you cannot be a blessing. If you are That's not right. favored, where will you favor others? It's out of the favor mm. that God has favored us that we can favor mm. others. Yeah. Mm. favored person is not in a position, does not have the status to favor another person because he is living a diminished life himself. So God puts his favor upon us so we can be a blessing to his kingdom. When we are physically blessed or physically favored, spiritually favored, financially favored, then the ultimate purpose of God comes to being where we can be a blessing. Why does God put his favor upon us? He puts his favor upon us to put a disparity between them that serve him and them that serve him not. And that's the reason mm -hmm. why we're asking the question um, on Sunday. What do we do when we notice that our seeds of favor are not growing? Or what can stop the seeds of favor from growing? We should be concerned. Mm -hmm. I remember that we said on Sunday morning, we must be concerned if we do not see the favor of God growing progressively in our lives. It should give us concern. We should not take it for granted. We should not see it as one of those things because it is the ultimate plan and purpose of God, just like it was for Jesus in Luke 2.52, that the favor of God should be on the increase on all sides of our lives. Why is it that God puts his favor um, on our lives? It is because favor makes us much more effective and effectual. A favored man is much more effective and effectual, both in his own personal business, as well as in the business of God. Lack of favor causes a whole lot of complications, hindrances, blockages, limitations, barriers, impediments. When the favor of God is on a church, that church will be naturally, normally much more effective and effect mm -hmm. the greater the level, the volume, the quality, the abundance of God's favor, the more effective and efficient that we are, both in the secular, if I may use that word, as well as in sacred matters. Why is it that God puts his favor upon us? It is to draw men to him. Favor is an oil of attraction. Everyone naturally migrates towards a favored man or woman. So favor helps us to draw men, 
to God. Favor helps us to draw men to God. Why is it that God favors us once again? It is to give us influence. A favored man is a man of influence. A favored mm. church is a church that will have influence. Influence mm. is directly proportionate to favor. The more the abundance mm. of God's favor upon our lives, the more influence that we have in all spheres of life. This is one major, amongst many other things, why God favors us. Remember, when the purpose of a thing is unknown, abuse is inevitable. When the purpose of a thing is unknown, abuse is inevitable. So we need to know why we are trusting God, we are believing God, we are hoping towards God, we are expecting, we are desiring God to favor us. And that in itself positions us for that abundant level of favor. Briefly, talking about the relationship between favor and labor. There's been a great misconception on the part of most of us. Um, and um, I take that back if um, um, you think otherwise, that in the body of Christ, many persons have misconstrued favor as the absence of labor. In essence, mm. that once the favor of God is upon our lives, it means that we should be indolent, we should be idle, we should do less work, we should not match our faith with works. Let's not forget that faith without works is death. And even so, favor without labor will equal to zero. The Bible says it is a bastard child that sleeps in the harvest. It is a bastard child that sleeps in the harvest. The time of harvest is the time to labor. So the presence of God's favor on our lives does not absorb us from diligence, dedication, commitment, discipline to our careers, as well as the works of the kingdom. Somebody said everything only works when we work it. The favor, it makes things <laughs> easier. I'd rather put three major things I said. Favor makes labor easier. Favor makes labor easier. Favor helps us to even find a labor. Without the favor, you can't even find something to labor on. It is the favor of God that makes provision for that job, that job opportunity, that career, that contract. Favor even makes labor much more productive. Favor makes labor more productive. Two persons are laboring, but there's a favor of God upon one. The one that has a favor of God upon him will be much more productive in his labor. It does not say that the fact that we have the favor of God or the abundant favor of God, we should exclude ourselves from all the legitimate things that we ought to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's um, one or two other areas that um, we want to talk about. Um, we all, in line with the team for the month, abundant favor must always look forward to higher levels and dimensions of favor. There's still always a higher level and dimension of favor other than what we are presently experiencing or enjoying. We must desire abundant favor. We must hope for abundant favor. We must long and task for abundant favor. We should expect abundant favor. We should actually pray for abundant favor. We should believe for abundant favor. The same vein, in the same vein, where it is written in that Luke chapter 2, verse 52, that Jesus Christ increased in favor with God and with man. And we pray corporately today that from now till eternity, 
the favor of God and the favor of man will be on progressive increase on all aspects of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I would, uh, uh, in closing up in a few minutes, um, I'll talk about two other subset themes and um, I would um, round it off there. What is it that favor does to a man? Favor sets up a man or a woman or an individual for progress, for prosperity. Favor sets apart. Favor sets aside. Just as exemplified in the life of Aaron, we can imagine out of all of the families in the tribe or I mean in the land of Israel, the Lord chose the family of the Levites. And of all the families of the Levites, Aaron was singled out or the family of Aaron was singled out. That's what favor does. Out of the 12 sons of Jacob, David was singled out by favor. Out of many sons of the father of Joseph, Joseph was singled out by favor. And this appeals to me and to every one of us so much. In a strange land, just like we all are presently, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, by the power, by the covenant, by the anointing, by the grace of abundant favor, in the hidden lands, they rose up to the highest levels of favor. What can only be defined as abundant favor and they became spokesmen to the royals of their own age and time and i'm strongly believing and prayerfully that even as we find ourselves as strangers in a strange land just like the aforementioned persons were we will rise up to the highest levels in this land in the name of Jesus Christ. By favor. Amen. By favor. Amen. By favor. Amen. When Amen. it was the time of famine, a time of scarcity, Isaac was set aside. Isaac was set apart. Isaac was distinguished. He received a hundred food when others were crying of a drought. That's what favor mm. does. Favor makes, let's not forget, like I previously said, Isaac sowed. He sowed, even though it was time of famine, he sowed for him to experience and enjoy that dimension of favor. I've often thought, and pray, I mean, playfully, casually said, if there were two persons who had a farmland, one was a sinner, and the other was a saint. And they both went to their farmlands and the sinner took his seed and did not pray. And he sowed his seeds. But the Christian man or the Christian woman, he went ahead to his own seed and he only spoke in all manners of tongues and he never hmm. sowed his seed. After some seasons, the sinner man, the ungodly, unrighteous, unholy, he will return hmm. and find out in the midst of his ungodliness and unrighteousness, that the seeds is sown has germinated to certain extent, in spite yeah. of his wickedness, in line yeah. with the word of God, that God allows his son and his reign, both to reign and to shine on the good and evil. But the Christian man who has put his hand in his pocket, Bible say a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of your hands, yeah. you will come yeah. over in spite of the favor of God upon your life. Little wonder that Paul said, the grace of God that was given to me was not in vain. I Amen. labored more than all of you. Amen. Paul, 
in spite of the favor on his life, that he labored more than all the other apostles. Mm. So favor mm. works with labor. Mm. What is it that favor does? Favor distinguishes a person. Favor puts a, a disparity in the life of a person. Favor makes the difference for a person. Favor elevates. Favor de defends. Favor upholds. Favor exalts. Favor breaks protocols. Favor protects. Favor preserves. Favor prospers. Favor projects a man. What is it that favor does? Favor positions a man, a woman for greatness. Amongst many other things, as we're going to see in the final session of the teaching. There are certain men and women in the Bible whose lives to me, according to the words of Solomon the wise man, are quite amazing. Solomon said, there are six things that are mystery unto me. The seventh one is beyond my reasoning. Even so, I want to cite these 10 examples and then um, we're going to take questions, comments, and contributions. How do we explain, number one, the life of Paul the Apostle, who, in quote, was an enemy of the church of God. He resisted the word of God. But by the favor of God, at the time of life, Saul became Paul. And by the estimation of Bible scholars, theologians, teachers, he became the most prominent apostle of all time in the Bible, writing to Todd of the New Testament. By him, by the inspiration that God gave to him, we have basically all the teachings on the fundamentals of Christianity. A man that was once an enemy of God became the friend of God. So much that he said he was caught up to heavens. He had voices that no man had heard. He saw things that no man had seen. That's what the favor of God, the abundant favor of God can do for a man. These mm. are classical cases of the abundant favor of God. How that it can bring transformation, how that it can bring positive changes, how that mm. it can, I mean, uh, um, make a man a testimony. Number two, mm. One of the most outstanding passages of the scriptures is the story of Rahab the harlot. Mm. Somebody that the Bible described as an harlot, but yet by favor. Don't forget once again, it was favor is always matched with actions or favor goes with labor. She saw the spies that came to spy out Jericho. And she put her faith into action, received them into her household, risked her own life. It can only be favor. Bible scholars will attest to the fact that she became the lineage or um, the great, great grandmother of our Lord Jesus Christ. That could only have been abundant favor. Number one, this is a woman that was a gentile. Number two, this is a woman that was an alert. Um, Number three, she ended up marrying a man of the tribe of Judah, if I remember. That could only be a perfect example of God's abundant favor, even in the old Testament. Number three, I'm talking about the thief on the right hand, as we oh. call him. <laughs> this man had sinned all of his life. He had done all the worst evils possible. And that was why he was doomed to die by hanging, hanging on the cross. But just at the nick of time, 
when all hope was lost, Jesus said to him, all based on his own action. Remember, there's always a corresponding action to take in line with yeah. favor yeah. at this man was standing by the God of favor, or he was hanging next to the God of favor, or the son of the God of favor. And all by him saying, well, I know I am guilty. I do not merit any good thing. But you, the son of God, you do not deserve what you are going through. And the son of God merely, he never even had asked, uh, Bible scholars are on the platform, he never even legitimately asked for forgiveness or repented yet. And the son of God said to him, today, <laughs> not even tomorrow, today, mm. you will be with me in paradise, in my own vein, in my own conceit. Mm. That is mm. a perfect example of God's abundant and unmerited favor. Number mm. four, when the fire of Satan, not the fire of God, mm -hmm. when all the calamities befell Job, Job, yeah, of the cases, thrice the fire came. The Sabians came mm -hmm. with the army to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The evil winds came, but in all of the situations and circumstances, there was always one man who said. I only, I have escaped. What mm. was the rationale for their escape? Mm. What informed their escape? But my own idea of abundant favor is this. I should always be that man who escaped when all evils came. That mm. is abundant favor. Yeah. The enemy came the first time, one man escaped. The enemies came the second time, one man escaped. The enemies came the third time. One man also escaped. That's what God's abundant favor does. It exempts us from evils that befall every other person. Little wonder that the Bible says, a thousand will fall at our side, 10,000 mm -hmm. right outside. It will not come mm -hmm. near us. Why? Because of God's covenant, God's oaths of abundant favor that is upon our lives. When others mm. say there is a casting down, we shall say there is a lifting up. Favor, mm. I call it God's abundant favor of exemption from evil. And mm. it will be very, very pertinent to say at such a time like this, the plague called COVID-19 cannot catch up with you and me because God's abundant favor of exemption from plagues is upon us. When the angel of death came in Egypt, all the household of Israel were exempted because they were the favored people of God. Number four, God was going to initiate a covenant relationship with humanity and out of so many millions of millions of millions around the world, God chose Abraham to be the father of faith. In my own thinking, Abraham experienced and encountered the abundant favor of God. Mm. There's no doubt in our hearts as many of us who are Christians, there's about 200 countries and much more in the world today. Out of 200, there's a chosen nation which we all know about, mm. which is Israel. And this mm. Israel, God categorically told them, I did not choose you because you were better than all the nations of the earth. The Etites, the Gagashites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, these seven nations, they are actually greater and mightier than you. But it pleased me to choose you to just be 
the singled out one, the abundantly favored nation. That's one of the mysteries of abundant favor that I meditate on personally in my life. Mm. Another person I want to talk about tonight is Joseph. Joseph was not the firstborn out of many, but it pleased God for him to experience abundant favor, not just in his own country, but outside his own nation. And Joseph became the prime minister in Egypt by God's abundant favor. The Israelites usually are an abomination to the Egyptians. Shepherds are an abomination to the Egyptians. But mm. abundant favor of God negated all of those things because that's what favor does. Favor disemphasizes our weaknesses and then highlights our strengths. Favor disemphasizes our weaknesses and highlights our strength. We are not favored, not necessarily because we have all been perfectly right, just like we see in the case of the thief on the right hand side of Jesus Christ, who had sinned unto the end. But at the very end, the abundant favor of God spoke for him. We have the case of the woman that was caught in adultery in the very act. But beyond the expectation of the Jews and the religious persons of his age, they would have thought that the master would write her off. But I'm of the opinion that by the abundant favor of God, she was considered. And um, the word of the Lord came to her, say, go and sin no more. I'll share two more examples. And then we have comments and contribution as well as questions relative to God's abundant favor. Ruth mm. was a Gentile. Mm. Ruth was a Gentile. She did not know the God of the spirits of all flesh, the God of Israel. But we see, um, or rather, Naomi, uh, Ruth, the case, I'm talking about the case of Ruth and Naomi. Um, yeah. Not yeah. being Gentile, yet stuck to Naomi. Yeah. She stuck yeah. to Naomi. Yeah. And by so doing, she was also grafted into the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ. We see two women, Rahab, their Lord, Ruth, who by their faith, by their actions of faith as such, or as well, were grafted into God's ultimate program. So Ruth found abundant favor with God. And then the complexities of favor, like I will put it, Jonah was a man of God. And despite rebelling against God's program, God's plan, God's purpose, God's agenda, God would not let him go. God <laughs> would not leave him, but worked in his life to see to it that he remained in his perfect will. How many times individually, many of us, we would have gone astray. We would have lost covenants with God. But God, out of his abundant favor, urged us on every side that we will not derail. The mm. brother's son went away from his father. But in the abundant favor of God, he returned again. He desired that the food of pigs was to be given to him. But they would not offer it to him because if they had offered it to him, probably he would have settled in. But God pushed him to the walls and he returned back home. I want to submit um, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, friends, that the principle of 
supernatural abundant favor is a reality. It is biblical. Yes. It is yeah. history. It is contemporary. And it is nothing to be despised nor disdained. If you want to live a full life, if you want to excel on every side, if our joy must be full, if our testimonies must be complete, if we want to fulfill the mandate of God upon our lives, if we do not want to labor as men that beat the wind, then we must look up to God honestly, perpetually, consistently for the abundant favor of God. As individuals, we all need the abundant favor of God as it was on Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Joseph, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel, Esther, out of 126 provinces, women brought before the king, mm. God's abundant favor, mm. good are out. The abundant favor of God is powerful, is dynamic in its working. It makes the difference in everything. Let's not forget, Abraham's family was singled out. The Levites were singled out. Eli's family was singled out by favor. Saul was singled out by favor. We talk about um, nations. Israel was singled out. We talk about um, churches. There are contemporary churches that we all know, not by power, not by might, but we know that God's abundant, exceptional favor has been on them. Yeah. And they have been able to do so much. Some people yeah. have said, oh, believe in me, child of God, in spite of the pandemic, many mm -hmm. persons have been much more blessed during this pandemic than they were blessed before the pandemic. The pandemic true, has turned out to be a blessing. I can categorically mm -hmm. say of many persons, not far-fetched people, who the, the, the so-called 2020 has happened to be one of their best years ever. That's what favor mm -hmm. does. The same way favor worked for Isaac in the midst of their own recession, in the midst of the downtown, even so, mm -hmm. Favor, abundant favor has worked for many businesses in this legitimate businesses. Mm. I'm not talking about Ile. people who are doing legitimate businesses who have yeah. been blessed like never ever before during mm. this pandemic. So it's true. nothing can stop the favor of God. The favor of God cannot be limited by pandemic. So we don't have to say, after the pandemic, I will experience the favor of God. Or the pandemic is stopping me from experiencing. No, God cannot be limited. Even so, is abundant favor. Praise the Lord. So we open for questions, comments, contributions. Um, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for the privilege. Amen. 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 Wow. We give glory to God. We give glory to God. Even this Bible study that we have just received tonight is the abundant favor of God upon us. There is no single individual online tonight that will not say that they have been watered. They have been watered. I have been watered. I, I can feel it that every one of us have been watered sufficiently. It is the abundant favor of God. You don't just find discussions and studies that blesses the mind of people that penetrate into the bone marrows and the water and the blood into all the ligaments and the veins and the muscles and the tissues. It is only the favor of God that can make such to happen. So we 
tonight have enjoyed the abundant favor of God by being a partaker of such a wonderful Bible study. So as apostles have said, this is a time for question, contribution. Um, if anyone has testimony about the abundant favor of God upon your life, how it, how it has manifested upon you, anything to edify the body of Christ. I know that tonight's Bible study have transformed the mind and life of every one of us. It would be a big surprise and shock to me if anyone after leaving tonight's platform for the, during this Bible study and they, their life is not transformed. That would be a shock. So I know that every one of us we have been impacted greatly. So I've been looking through. There's no hand up for questions. If um, anyone has a question, then you can have seen one hand. If you have any question, you can either indicate by raising your hand or you can just unmute your phone and um, introduce yourself and then ask your question. So um, yes, I will, I'll ask, um, the first question is from Pastor Maxwell, or whether it's a contribution. Yes, Pastor Maxwell, you can go ahead, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, I'm going to say, uh, I, 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 I'm going to try and put a, a, a little bit of contribution that will lead to my question. Okay, because uh, uh, um, Apostle Sam, I know you've, uh, you've you dived into a lot of um, dimensions regarding um, uh, favor. But in saying that, I look at this abundant, abundant favor. There are some examples that you've, that you've made, some from the Old Testament and uh, some from the, from the New uh, uh, Testament. But I come to, uh, I've come to understand that in the Old Testament, righteousness was by works. And in the New Testament, it wasn't. Now, the reason why I'm saying uh, this is this: the favor of the, the the favor of God in the Old Testament, and the favor of God in the New. That grace has brought us inside that favor of God. So we look at the example you made, like pe people like uh, 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 Brother Paul. I mean, pe people like Apostle Paul. Now, people like Apostle Paul, the favor of God started on him after the conversion. The favor of God was not on him before the conversion because he was not a believer. He was not inside that grace. And he made mention of that himself. So what I'm trying to say is this. If uh, 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 Brother Paul fell under the, under the mercy of God, because it was mercy that found him first, then when he accepted it under the submissive will of God, I mean of Christ, because nobody is going to want to go blind. So he accepted it and he walked through in faith. Then favor to do, uh, favor to uh, 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 build the ministry start coming upon him. Now, the same thing with the thief at the right hand side of God. Favor. The, the thief did not do anything to receive favor. I know where you're coming from. I, I just want to bring out the question. That's why I'm explaining this. The, the thief received mercy because with favor, if we're to be favored, then the thief will have actually used that favor because you made mention of something that favor helps uh, 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 us to bring men to God. But this uh, 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 thief died inside it. Rehab was, it was our work. Now, in saying that, this is my question. When we are talking, if, when, when you were explaining, you were explaining blessing as well. You were explaining uh, things of the spiritual and things of the physical. So I really want to know, because to me as a person, I believe that with favor, 
for anybody to receive favor, whether spiritual or physical, I believe that your character must speak. Your faith, you must, you must be in that grace for you to be able to receive favor. I believe that it is automatic. Now, this is my question. If what you have explained regarding the physical blessings, how do I preach or how do I speak to people like Bill Gates, people like Dangote? What, what, how, do I, how do I explain favor to them that they will understand? Because obviously they cannot understand it when I speak to them spiritually. They cannot understand it. And when I speak to them physically, they look at me that I am not up to their standard. So how do I bring people like that into the ministry of Christ for them to see and say, yes, Christ is Lord? That's my question. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Should I go ahead, sir? Yes. Yeah, go ahead, sir, Apostle. Yes, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like uh, honestly, honestly, there, there are certain things that um, time will fail us to talk about that I highlighted here. Number one, I wanted to talk about the connection, the relationship between mercy, grace, and favor. Okay, that's quite that's quite a very complex one. Uh -huh. we, we cannot separate the mercy of God, the grace of God the favor of God, they all work hand in hand. You first right, my question. Right from the Old Testament up until <laughs> now. But that's another deep teaching entirely. Mm. But there's one scripture, Romans chapter 9, uh, 15 to 16, that many of us knows. God himself said, whilst they were yet unborn, Esau and Jacob, yeah. God said, Esau have I hated, mm -hmm. Jacob have I loved. Yeah. It is one fundamental scriptures that teaches us the concept of mercy, grace, and favor, and which is a very delicate teaching, which will take another, a whole Sunday school or Bible study to talk about the concept of mercy, grace, and favor. There's other um, dimensions to this thing. Um, uh, the unmerited as well as merited favor of God. More often than not, Bible scholars, we teach only exclusively about the unmerited favor of God. But there's another dimension of scriptures, the merited favor of God. Things don't always... Sir? Things don't always just happen. I said it's very true. Very there is a dimension mm. of unmerited favor. There's another dimension of merited favor. Merited. Even from the mm. Old Testament, the Bible says a certain man took a prostitute and brought to the camp of the Israelites. And he was going to sleep with the woman in the camp. And somebody from the tribe of Levi rose up while others were looking carelessly away and he stabbed him. And God said, because of this that you have done, I have again consolidated my covenant with your family. Something provoked that favor. In many cases, even in the Old as well as in the New Testament, we will see justified or merited favor. Where somebody did something and then it produced something. If we read Hebrew 11, we see perfect examples um, of that. And then finally to say there are different, um, if, let's say, there are different constituents or types of favor. There's spiritual favor, for example. There's financial favor. It's all favor. They are all components. They are, they are, they are all constituents of favor. So the, the, is that these concepts are deep. It's, it's not something that we can take in isolation. And it's a function of where we turn our faith to or what we desire or hope or expect that God should perform 
in our lives. Some person, for example, can say, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be rich, I don't want to be wealthy. All I want to do is to have my bills paid. Invariably, he has said, I don't want financial favor. I don't know if I'm making any sense. So yeah, person yeah, say, no. well, well, I I I am not interested in marriage. Marriage is a complex institution. I'm, I'm enjoying my life as a single person. So why should I be married? He has already said or closed the door against marital favor in his mind by his words, by his actions. Some other person may say, well, for me, I just want to be in church. I don't want to do anything extraordinary for God. Such a person might not see the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit or the anointing of stewardship in his or her life because he already told mm -hmm. God, all I want to do is be in church, sit quietly at the back and just be a Christian. So the the, the favor is, is all encompassing, is dynamic, is deep. We're just trying to scratch the face. We, are, we have not even delved into 1% of what we can discuss and talk about favor. But I, I, I pray that the most important aspects that God wants us to see in this season, he will highlight them to us, either by our teachings on Sunday or Sunday school or in our prayer meetings. I can just, that's what I can just say. God can only highlight the most important aspects he wants, to see, wants us to see in this season. Because there's actually too much to talk about favor, you know, like uh, in the words of Jesus, that all the books in this world cannot contain it. Can I, can I, can mm -hmm. I just say one thing quickly, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for that. The reason, the reason why I asked that question and the reason why I decided to use uh, um, Dangote and what's it called, right, is that, and you mentioned it again, is the financial uh, uh, side of favor, okay? Now, when we look at it, when, when we talk about the financial side of favor, it's actually, this is, listen, this is, this is, this is me, uh, or this is my own belief. When, when we talk about financial favor, it actually takes away the original favor. And the reason why I'm saying this is this. With, with, with financial favor, there are principles that one, one has to follow to be financially stable. Now, the principle that one has to follow biblically is that you must go to school or you must go and learn a job. When you qualify, then you have a job. Now, you come and look at it. Uh, how can two people come out at the same time? One is a believer and the other one is not a believer. And, if, and both of them graduated. Now, if the financial stability between the two of them the one that is not of Christ is greater than the one that is, that is a believer. Then the one that is a believer needs to check himself or yep. herself. There is something that that believer is doing wrong whereby the unbeliever supersedes. And as long as the unbeliever is doing something right in the physical realm of the principles of agreement regarding the job or rather the, the qualification, yes, that unbeliever will climb the ladder of success. Now, is that favor from God? That is the question. So the one that is in Christ that is not doing what is right, and you mentioned it in your teaching, that is not doing what is right in the line to get a good job. You're lazy, you're, you're listening to preaching that is telling you that God is a magician. You are not doing anything. How can you climb the ladder of uh, 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 financial stability? It is impossible. There is no how favors like that will be, I mean, there's no how we can turn favors like that. So when it comes to the, when, it, when you, the, the last thing I just wanna say, sorry for taking your time, is when you made mention of uh, Esau and uh, 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 Jacob, I don't think that will happen again in this dispensation of grace. I don't think it will happen again. There's no how God will say that, okay, this one, uh, 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 I love this one, I ate. 
for as long as one is in faith and one is walking as part to what Christ has taught us, what we have read, listening to the Holy Spirit to do, it, there is no how one will not receive favor. There is no how one will not receive favor. Uh-huh. It's all about what we do. So if they do, if the if the person does not do what is right, then you are not connected to the favor that is inside grace. As a believer, yeah. all things we needed is inside grace. But when we talk of financial stability, then is then we are trying to take ourselves away from that grace, m- matching ourselves to the unbeliever because they are successful as well. The unbelievers, they do things and they have money. And that is blessing. Anyone that don't have money to eat, you are not blessed. Thank you. Uh, is that? Thank, thank you so much, sir. Um, I want to just quickly mention something here that um, even unbelievers that tend to be successful in their businesses, Bill Gates, Dan Gotti, and uh, Warren Buffett, all of them, anyone, um, before they become successful, it is the favor of God upon their life that brings that success. If any man, any human being, whether saved or not, if God has not favored you, there is no amount of work that that person can do that That can bring success. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. That is the A to Z of life. Some of those, some of these things, we may not understand them. Some of these things are mystery. They are deep. They are unsearchable. Some of them, our mind will never know them. We will never understand. No man can understand the mind of God. No man can even know how God thinks. The Mm. way that God thinks it, it is it is completely different from the way that man thinks. He said that we use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. So I think where we sometimes get it mixed up is when we are trying to reason and rationale some things with our <laughs> own mind. We must never try to rationale anything with our mind when it comes to God. God is completely out of the zone that we can think about him with our mind. Our mind is too infinite, too small, too tiny to comprehend and think about God. That is the reason why the best way in life sometimes to just approach God is to just come in total humility and surrender. The little that you understand and you know, just take it, leave the rest. In the process of trying to think a bit more, to know more, many people have confused themselves and many people have gone mad. Many people have become atheists. Many people have been left to reprobate mind. Many people have fallen out of faith. It is a dangerous thing to try and think a bit more than God has given us. Because we will never search out God. Oh, we can't. We can't. A million, one million years from today, we will not, we will never be able to search out God. Uh, It's too, it's too deep. So, all any any businessman, anyone that is a billionaire, trillionaire, what kind of money and success that they have at, achieved in life? It was God that favored them. It was not their fina- it was it was not their strategy or their business acumen or thinking. Even though it, they may even be unbelievers, it is still God that favored them. Mm. Is a mystery. We should just try and just understand it that way because 
no man can be favored or blessed unless God first favor him. That is the end of the matter. And that is true. Mm -hmm. So that is the reason why all of us should be humble before God and fear him. That is why we must humble before God and fear him. In fact, we should fear God tremendously. We, God is someone that when we come before him, we should, we should come almost like shaking. And not yep. the fear of, um, not, not the fear of because he's a terror, but the fear that is too big mm -hmm. that we can't search him out and we don't want to offend him because he's our life. He's, he's everything to us. Outside him, there's nothing else. So we will humble. That is that I live my life before God. And that is the way that I want to continue to live my life before God. And that is the way I will recommend every one of us to live our life before God. Mm -hmm. If we live like that before God, uh, it will be very difficult for us to miss it. And the, the devil himself too will be frustrated because the way that the devil ensnares people is when people think that they are something by themselves. And when he sees a man that knows that he is nothing, and he has completely made himself to be nothing. The devil himself gets confused and is frustrated. Eventually, he leaves that man and go. May the Almighty God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The, Bible, the Bible study of tonight have Praise definitely God. touched. Have, have definitely touched my own life and, and transformed by the power of the Word of God tonight. And I want to believe that everyone online tonight have been transformed. Amen. And I know that the anointing that God has used the man of God to, to talk to us tonight with is going to transfer into our lives and is going to put upon us that garment of abundant favor because I, we need it and we will receive it tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, all right, yes. Uh, I think, uh, did I hear the voice of uh, Brother John Osaro? Yes, sir. Ah, sorry, sir. Go ahead, sir. So, uh, I just wanted to add to your contribu uh, the contribution that yes. you raised. Uh, for me, favor is, uh, is, is a spiritual thing, which, uh, you know, it comes from God. You know, we should not look at favor as money or, you know, just the property that, you know, we possess. Is. Because for me, if God wants to bless somebody, he will not give him money. If God wants to bless a man, he will not give him a house or money or anything. Where God blesses somebody, he gives you what money cannot buy. That's what God gives to a man. It's not just money or whatever we think physically. So it's a spiritual, it's a spiritual thing. So when God blesses, he gives you what money cannot buy. Those are spiritual things that God used to favor his children. And as well, I was also talking about the difference between favor and labor. There is a big difference. Now, if you look at uh, Matthew 11, verse 28, the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labors, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And in James chapter 2, verse 26, the Bible says, Faith without works is dead. You know, many believe that it is the work, physical work, that the Bible is saying no. You know, when we say faith without works, yeah, Jesus Christ has already worked it out. He died on the cross. So that is the work of Christ that the Bible is saying. So when we, when we believe that work of Christ, that is the faith. So faith without work is dead. And that work is the work of Christ, not our own work. So and there is a difference between work and labor. Because many of us think that going to our daily job is labor. No, there's a difference because some people who may have been doing one work or the other, but there is nothing to show for it. You know, our life is not lived like that. Our life is lived as a child of God by favor. Anything we touch to do favor, we, we yield impact. So that is why I want us to separate the favor from labor. Because as a child of God, we are not expected to labor as a child of God. And in first, uh, okay, Thessalonians chapter one, verse three, the Bible says our work is a work of faith and our labor is a labor of love. You know, love for God. 
That is what we should labor, work for God, to labor for the things of God. And as you labor for the things of God, you work for the things of God, then you receive favor from God. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Brother John. I, I totally understand the angle you are coming from. And I genuinely, honestly agree with you. But I want to just say this, that, um, you know, when our teacher used that word labor, comparison between favor and labor, it, it's just um, the use of word. He's, he's, he's referring to the work that we must work. So that a lot of people think that because God has favored them, then they can sit down at home and expect miracle to happen on their bed. Some people will think because God has favored them, they will just sit at home and somebody will just come and call them and come and give them a contract. Or somebody will bring um, a letter of employment to them in their own, in their houses, you know? So um, it, it's, it's uh, because I totally agree with you, sir, Brother John, that yes, uh, you know, children of God, as children of God, we are not to labor. Oh yes, oh my goodness, I agree, totally. So, but our teacher is not talking about the labor that, that in that context is talking about labor in the context of work with our hands, you know, because we, we need to work with our hands. We need to get our hands into something and do something, not just be uh, indolent, uh, not just be, um, not, 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 not just be lazy. The Bible talks about being slothful, not to be slothful in business. So um, yes, the Lord, the Lord will help us, but thanks for your contribution, sir. And um, it, it's a valid one. Okay, I think we'll just take one more because I've seen a hand up. Um, I don't know whether that's Dr. Priska or Evangelist Dominic, <laughs> because when you use your same phone, I don't know who is uh, putting the hands up, but one of you. So please go ahead. Yeah, on, on mute, sir, or, or doctor. Okay, thank you. God bless, sir. God bless you, sir. Amen, sir. And so I'm quite uh, delighted over the whole uh, uh, topic. And uh, yeah, I feel uh, highly blessed Amen. over the whole Amen. thing. Amen. Um, I, Amen. I want to uh, touch one. I would need a bit of uh, clearance over one uh, particular thing Pastor Marshall talked about when he talks yes. about uh, how we can actually how, when he asks a question, say, how can we prove to somebody like uh, Bill Gates, who is an unbeliever, or Dan Gote, who is not a Christian, and so on and so forth. All them very extra wealthy people, people like Proto and Gambo, who said that he asked uh, God for money and God didn't give him money, and he asked the devil to give him money, and the devil gave him money, and he built uh, the <laughs> Satanic Church of America, etc. So it's a, a complicated uh, thing. Then number yeah. two, I want to uh, talk about um, the person of uh, Finahas, who our teacher used as an example when, he, when God counted his action as righteousness. When uh, yeah. Moses was uh, rebuking the people of Israel for associating themselves with the Midianites and uh, and Israeli went and brought a Midianite into the camp. Yeah. And Phinehas looked at it, angry with that kind of behavior, picked up his uh, sword and pierced uh, both the woman and the man together. And God saw it as righteousness. And mm -hmm. uh, to me, it is righteousness. And that brings me to my question, because most time when I say something like this, uh, or when I say I, I feel that what uh, Finehas did was right and should continue even at this our era, people feel that uh, I'm extremist for saying, <laughs> okay, why why don't uh, they, they feel God can fight for himself? Why do I, am I fighting for God? Why should I fight for God? And things continue to go wrong and people are saying God should fight for himself. Why God has given us a bit of brain to reason out things and then take action on certain things and the rest of it. So at this point, I want to ask, is it right when you see people committing um, uh, taboo, abominable acts, you sit back and watch them and say, oh, God will take care of them. 
Is that right, sir? Thank you so much. Um, um, uh, I will quickly want to chip in something. Maybe I possibly, um, Sam, Sam may have something also to chip in. Um, I want to just say something, Evangelist Dominic, sir, that the fact that God counted what Finney has did at that time as righteous does not mean that if another man does it today, he will count it as righteous. We have to be very careful. You see, the fact that God approves something with somebody at one point does not mean that he's going to approve that thing with another person at another time who does the same similar thing under the same circumstance. Um, that is the reason why every single one must lean on the Holy Spirit. You must lean on the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. Okay. When the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us, we will never miss it. Amen. But if we use Amen. if we use an incident that happened 500 years ago, and then use it as a precedence, and then do exactly the same thing 500 years later, thinking because God has approved that thing that was done 500 years ago. Because of that, you think he will approve that thing that you've done 500 years later, that person may be seriously disappointed uh, because, because God may not approve it 500 years later. Everyone to his own calling, everyone to his own instruction, everyone to how God ministers unto, in, unto us. We, that is the reason why we have to be very careful. Yes, sir. And that is where they point out this statement that salvation of yesterday is not enough for today because we need to renew ourselves every day in God. God bless you. Every day in God, we need to renew ourselves. When we renew ourselves every day in God, then God will be updating our mind with his own mind. He will be synchronizing our spirit with his own Holy Spirit. He will, be, he will be gelling things together. And that way, we will be updated by God himself. Because God's instruction, they change per second sometimes. His instructions change per second sometimes. I mean, you can see, look at the case of that Phineas that you quoted now, and then compare it with the case of a man that was going with, with the Ark of Covenant. And the Ark, the the, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the the carriage that was carrying that ark rocked. And this is the ark of the covenant, very sacred. It, it must not touch the ground. And this man, out of passion, and, you know, out of out of a heart of love for the things of God, the, ah, the, the covenant of God, the covenant, the ark of covenant, the ark of covenant. And he put his hands to strand, support it, that the ark will not fall. Mm -hmm. And immediately, God instruct his angel to strike him dead instantly. How can anyone explain that one now? So if you compare it with that case of the Phineas, you will see that, ah, we must not use one case to give us a precedent for another case. Uh -huh. We must everybody, let everybody listen to God himself and take instruction from God and leave examples of or, 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 or what I'll call precedent cases because our God you cannot fathom his ways yeah. you can't fathom his ways you can't fathom his ways you know for me there are many many parts of God that sometimes it, it, it scares me yeah. It scares me because you cannot predict God. Mm -hmm. you, we don't know. We don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know. But one thing that I do that makes me feel safe in him is that I will, I will make sure that I humble myself and reduce myself to nothing. I used to, I used to have a dog in Nigeria because I loved dog when I was, um, when I was uh, young. You know, I love dog. I, I, in fact, I love animals. I have dogs. I have birds. I I have dogs, I have cats, and all that. One of my dogs, Jack, he upset me one day. I was only a little boy, 11 years old. He upset me so badly. I was so upset with it. If you remember that time, you know, some dogs used to go out and eat feces. 
So, and I was training this dog not to do that. And I saw him eating feces. I was so upset. So I hit that dog. I beat that dog very hard. Instead of that dog to bite me or to, to back at me, he was just crying. He now put his head down near my, my, my leg. He put his head down and he now sleep on my leg. And he was just there. He was just showing that he's at my mercy. Oh, as a little boy, 11 years old, my heart busted with tears. Mm. And I began to beg him. I said, Jack, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And that is a dog to me, to a man. Mm. If, if we can bring ourselves that low before God, mm. if we can just come humble before him, yes. even when we have done wrong and he smack us, we still come down and say, Lord, I'm sorry, please. Mm. You will be surprised that he will always elevate us and lift us up. Yes. And we will never miss it in life. Mm. The best way to witness with God is to come down and be humble. Oh. When you mm. do that totally, you will find that there is no height mm. that will be higher than you. Amen. So the Lord will help us mm. in mm. Jesus' name. Amen. Apostle Sam, you can Apostle Sam, you, you can Thank give you. us some uh, additions uh, if you want to something more. I think I think uh, much much has been said here and there, but like um Basically, we must always know that we all know in part. Um, we do not have um, exhaustive knowledge about God. Um, <clears throat> the Bible describes him as the God of all mysteries. Everything God is a mystery. And uh, one of the greatest mysteries of all time is the favor of God. It's, it's one big mystery. Because like um, Prophet said, Prophet Max, you some some sometimes you know many times you can't even explain it. It's inexplicable. The favor, the concept, the operation, the manifestation of the favor of God, it leaves you dumbfounded many, many a times. It, it, it sometimes, like you uh, said, Pastor James, it even keeps you confused. When you see the favor of God at work, sometimes you you are confounded and confused, so to say, you know, in, at at its ex extremities. So there's always that gray areas, and um, summarily. That's why we need to be led by the Spirit of God. There are gray areas, things that we cannot really comprehend it fully until by and by, like the songwriter says. But uh, um, we just pray that God will continue to guide us. Let's be led by the Spirit of God. Let's inquire, things, inquire from the Lord about all things. I believe that God will help us in Jesus' name. Thank you so very much, sir. Thanks, everyone. All right, thank you so much, Evangelist Dominic. Um, are you are you okay with uh, the answer? Or is there something else that you want us to clarify? Yes, I'm very very much okay. I'm, I don't know how to explain it, but uh, I am more than okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. God bless. Okay, okay the Lord bless you, sir. Amen, sir. God bless you, sir. All right. Well, um, I want I want I want every one of us to just pray prayer tonight before we have um, the announcements that uh, the Lord should put on us the garment of abundant favor because we must not allow the lesson of tonight to just go away mm. without releasing and dropping something mm. on, on our lives. Awesome. So wherever you are, whether you want to unmute yourself or you don't want to unmute yourself, you can feel free. But I would like you to pray a 60 seconds prayer for yourself. 60 seconds, which means one minute to say, Lord, by the grace that you have given me to hear this Bible study of tonight, please release, put your, put your garment of abundant favor upon me but because of your mercy. In the name of Jesus, please begin to pray that prayer because I want every one of us to, to go away with a substantial impact from the Holy Ghost on our lives. Begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you put upon me a moment of my life. I pray for your abundance of my life. I pray, Lord, that you put upon me a moment of my life. I pray for your abundance 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 of my life. 
Heavenly Father, we pray in the name. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is the summary of our prayer, Lord. We and our generations alike cause us to enjoy your abundant favor in all aspects until the end of ages in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Favor for long life, the favor of financial productivity, the favor to serve you, the favor to hear from you, the favor to be led by your spirit. Amen. In all things that concerns us, O oh God, let your abundant favor be evidenced. Amen. Let it be manifest. Let Amen. our whole life be a summary of your abundant favor. Yes, Lord. Let it change forevermore. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. We thank you for all of your favors this far. Thank we give you all the glory, Lord. In thank Jesus' you. name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Apostle. Thank, Thank you. God you. bless you, sir.